The problem stems right the way back to the Bible. The misogyny within the Bible, unfortunately, is very difficult for some people to bear. Definitions of masculinity and themselves have changed according to social, historical, and even political context. I think Jim's had a big influence over masculinity in the last 10 years, definitely, maybe even and more so in 50 years. They ain't got no muscle, no hustle, no backbone. I stand alone. Masculinity, a term defined and redefined by mankind. The Oxford Dictionary defines the term as the quality or condition of being masculine, or something traditionally considered to be the characteristic of a male. Perceptions of masculinity have developed historically from traditional concepts, such as religious belief. The problem stems right the way back to the Bible. Um, the misogyny within the Bible, unfortunately, is very difficult for some people to bear. Um, Adam and Eve appear to have specific roles, um, the man being to sent away to work and till the soil and the woman to kind of have the pain of childbirth. All the way through the Bible, um, it's, the, it's the line of David, it's Jesus who's gets the, who gets the position, and that has led, all of this kind of inherent misogyny within the Bible has led to a social construct that belittles and downgrades women across the board, in my opinion, within Christianity. It can be seen that the traditional role of the male is one of a dominant figure and a leader. This has perhaps been developed as a concept of the physical attributes of the male in the modern media, as discussed by Natasha Phillips. I think there's a lot of debate as to the extent of the influence of um, representations of masculinity and femininity in films on the audience. Some would argue that they're more influential than others. Certainly, there are a lot of uh, a lot of representations are aspirational, such as the rest of, uh, the representation of masculinity in lifestyle magazines, such as Men's Health, um, which are very much a cultural writ stereotype, um, presenting this idea of what it what it looks like to be a man, or you know, suggesting that if you are um, a good-looking, a fit, a healthy man, you should look like this. And the problem with this is that these representations aren't always a realistic portrayal of, um, of society. The, um, the whole idea of masculinity and what it is to be masculine has been redefined by magazines like Men's Health and apps and stuff like that. And because of new digital, new digital technology, it's just increased the amount of times we see these things. You need two hands to count during a day how many times you see, like a, I don't know, advertising with, you know, like a rip guy or, or something like that, or you should be this or you should be that. The influence of modern media has perhaps, in turn, encouraged the masculine gym culture. I think the gym's had a big influence over masculinity in the last 10 years, definitely, maybe even and more so over 50 years from what masculinity used to be. Because I think masculinity was often perceived as a, a bloke in a suit, but now it's What's, it, what's underneath the suit, how big is he, uh, what the muscles are like, has he got a definition. I think um, something that's come up in the last year or two is uh, muscle dysmorphia, where young guys in particular, it's more between like the age of 16 to 28, um, where guys will look at themselves in the mirror and feel very small, even though they're, they're actually not, they're quite big. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite a psychological effect, it's quite uh, depressing for guys as well.